So let's talk about publishing. After all, that is the reason that you are doing this course. In the words of the author Sylvia Plath, nothing stinks like a pile of unpublished writing. As in the literary world, data that is unpublished is pretty much dead to the world and eventually dead things smell bad. As Arthur Chapman said, it's not fit for use if no one can get to it. So what is data, what is data publishing all about? In terms of biodiversity data, publication is a very specific definition. And publishing refers to making biodiversity data sets publicly accessible and discoverable in a standardized form via an access point, typically a web address or URL. GBIF, Fertnet and Canadensis are good examples of groups already publishing biodiversity in this way and, they are, and there are many others. What they all have in common is that they are sharing data to the public using a standard platform via the web. So why should we publish? The 21st century has been called the century of data. Every day more and more data is collected, created and shared electronically. GBIF is a part of this movement. One of its goals is to provide well curated and standard data. Another is to enable others, such as yourself, to do the same. By doing this as a community, these data have the potential to greatly improve our knowledge and capacities in many areas. Biodiversity inf data can be used in taxonomic research, conservation biology, water management, ecotourism, as data repatriation tools. The list is almost endless. From an applied point of view, natural resource management agroforestry, bioprospecting, impact on climate change. These are all uses that benefit from increased sharing and con consolidation of data sets. Despite there being a myriad of tangible and compelling reasons to publish biodiversity data and share, there are also barriers to, the, to successful publishing. And these fall into a number of categories. Psychological and cultural barriers are typically not easily easy to quantify and often relate directly to an individual and their state of mind. As such, they are probably the hardest to overcome and there are no predefined solutions for these. Often, your greatest tools will be time, consistency and patience. Institutional barriers, such as a lack of authorization to publish and institutional policies, are often easily identified and solutions easy to define, however, implementation of these fixes is difficult and can be time consuming, complex and fraught with political intrigue. As much time as possible is required to implement such change. Capacity and practical barriers relate often to the stages of the process and an inability to carry them out successfully. These barriers are often solved by good, effective planning and pre-planning. Another important barrier to publishing are data restrictions. For most of us, the aim is to share as much as possible, as openly as possible. And for GBIF projects in particular, there are very specific rules that should be followed and these can be found on GBIF's website, gbif.org. It is sometimes, however, perfectly valid for a data set to be restricted. Um, these caveats and restrictions include um, dealing with taxa that are rare and or endangered in some way. Another example is the sharing of human remains data. These restrictions should always be discussed with the data owner. Prior to publishing, they should be agreed and documented. Remember that you may need to compromise with data owners and so starting with a smaller set of records or fields that can be shared openly is often a way to start the process. You can then work behind the scenes as the data owner becomes more comfortable with the process. Some is always better than none and documentation will explain the gaps. So. Sometimes it is simply a lack of will that prevents publication. And the question that is asked is, what is in it for me? 
Not everyone instantly sees the higher benefit, and this is a perfectly valid question. Some answers that may help you start a discussion are that increased sharing will allow access to financial support, for example, GBIF. There may be institutional and or legal mandates to share data, which mean it has to be done. Ethical and moral, moral commitments are another persuasive argument. Pra on a practical level, increased efficiency of data management and the saving of time for more interesting things may allow um, users to help you share. Lastly, you may use peer pressure. If one researcher is openly sharing, his collaborator may be persuaded to do so when he sees that his peer is comfortable.